Wednesday night, and that means it's time for the Lamar Thomas Show, featuring the greatest receiver in the history of college football. Just ask them, Lamar Thomas. I was born in uh, Ocala, Florida. I moved to Gainesville to go to high school. Being recruited probably since the ninth grade, illegally, I might add, by the University of Florida. I, I still can remember Coach Solinger, Don Solinger, coming out to our practice one day. Here it is, this guy comes out in the University of Miami jacket, and, and I, I said, I can't believe that's Miami out here. And, you know, I wanted to go up and say, hey, I'm Lamar Thomas. And, and actually, I, I did walk up to him and I said, hey, Coach, uh, I'm Lamar Thomas. And he said, I know. And that was the start of my uh, relationships with the uh, University of Miami. You come down here, you'll be on TV every weekend dominating. I thought about it. I said, man, where do I sign? Mom, uh, on Saturday mornings, I would wake up and she'd be holding my hand. I thought she was the weirdest lady in the world. <laughs> but she was holding my hands and she would be rubbing them and saying, one day these hands are going to make you a lot of money. <laughs> um, she was smart. So now, here he is, the great one, along with co-host Gary Furman of Kingsport.com, Lamar Thomas. What is going on, Lamar Thomas? Gary, 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 can you hear me? I, we can hear you, man. It's a, it's an open week. We're, we're every, everyone's feeling kind of mellow. Uh, not a lot to be intensive. Oh, you got yourself. You, you got, <laughs> man, you're, the you're, you're picking up sponsors left and right here. Um, Lamar, you're doing, you're, 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 you're doing well. I, I knew, I knew it wasn't going to take very long for you to uh, add Las Patas to the mix. Uh, but you, you went to Williamson Cadillac. You bought a couple of cars. You walked out of there. They couldn't help but decide to be a sponsor of the Lamar Thomas show. Um, I, I'll add them to the stream here in a minute. Um, we got the Florida Beach Bowl back um, coming to uh, Drive Pink Stadium this December. The law firm of Ratson and Batsadomo, uh, where clients can get aggressive legal representation. And more than anything, uh, we've got our presenting sponsor, Caneswear, which is the right. host location. That's where you're sitting tonight. You got your new cap on. Um, oh, no. What's this that, like a wind shirt? This is the new cap. Oh, that's the new cap. How about, hey, fresh off the press. Breaking news. Just got here. I don't even think they put the price. Oh, they're they going, they're the price. going back old school with the logo, yeah. huh? So so the M, which I kind of fell in love with the baseball M, but the stripes from football. I like uh -huh. it. I like it. I like it a lot. And um, so Lamar is in Canesware. The picture you see behind me is, is the picture of their new store. They have more Canes merchandise at Canesware right now than any store that has ever been created for the Canes fans. <laughs> so uh, if you have not been there yet this season, go check out um, their new store, 2655 South University Drive in Davie. You will not be sorry. They have every single thing you could possibly want um, there, you know, shirts, hats, polos, hoodies, hats, flags, decals, even tailgate stuff. They like if you want if you want a new, a new tailgate tent and chairs, things like that, you can get it at Canesware on your way to the Georgia Tech game uh, next week. And um, I'm sure Lamar is going to walk out of there tonight with some nice stuff for his little girls because he's that kind of dad. I am. Hi, Parker. Hi, Logan. <laughs> Hi, Blake. And obviously, Jackson should be asleep. <laughs> And I earned a wife. 
<laughs> Hi, Aaron. Haven't seen Aaron in a while. Um, but uh, God, it's been it has been a while since I've seen Aaron. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, no, it's we have an open week here this week. Lamar, uh, mm -hmm. a very chill time. The coaches have not taken a second off. They hit the road recruiting on Monday. Mario Cristobal went out to Vegas. He was out in California, um, you know, chasing chasing prospects out there, visiting Elijah Lofton, the tight end that's committed from Vegas Bishop Gorman. Uh, the rest of the coaching staff bouncing around. Cody Woodall um, was in uh, Georgia uh, visiting a Nye Dunn, this, this uh, receiver who decommitted. From, from Georgia, who now Miami is hot on the trail of. And uh, they're doing a good job of recruiting receivers, Lamar. If yeah. they could pull this Jeremiah Smith on, on top of what they've been doing, uh, they are going to have one heck of a receiver recruiting class uh, at the U this year. Um, well, very, very I, I, I can say this. Bear's doing an outstanding job. But most importantly, you know, yeah, Bear's doing a great job keeping that room intact, keeping them competing. But the offensive coordinator is showing some imagination. You know, it's not like last year where you kind of knew what they were going to do. It's keeping guys off their to um, the defensive coordinators or other teams. They, they don't know what's going on. And, you know, he has a running game. He has a quarterback. The O-line is playing outstanding. And the receivers are making plays, tight ends. I mean, it right now, they're looking pretty good. And, you know, this is what Mario has been working for. I mean, you know, he got here last year, obviously wasn't the year he wanted, but he made some changes as far as players and coaches. And right now it's paying dividends. Uh, and, you know, you couldn't ask for a better schedule than what they have so far, yeah. the way uh, being able to go up to Temple with a young team, as far as young guys getting to play a lot, and also the transfer portal guys getting to go for their first road trip up to Temple. It's a lot different than taking your first trip to a Florida State or to Clemson or somewhere like that. So I'm I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, the way this thing is set up, you know, now you got joy, you got an off week competition and it's a lot of competition going on down there. Guys are competing. Um, and then you got Georgia Tech. I mean, this is uh, it's, it's shaped up pretty good so far. You know, LT, uh, when I look at it, when I was leaving Philadelphia this past weekend and, uh, you know, I, I just, I just felt like this is a real, real important critical time of the season for, for this team. Uh, you know, they've had fairly easy success. Uh, even that Texas A&M game, I mean, it was close and all, but I mean, they really outplayed Texas A&M worse than what the final score, uh, showed I, I felt, um, so it's, it, it's, it's all come like really, really easy. And, to me, and 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 I can't wait to hear your opinion on this because you 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 can look at this from the both the player perspective and the coach perspective. Uh, you know, I just I I feel like you 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 have a little bit of a trap in that you could start feeling just a little too good mm -hmm. about yourself because it's come so easy. And you know, they've got eight games left here, and I'd say seven of the eight have a great chance to be really tough football games, including Georgia Tech, which yeah. is a pretty good offensive football team. Like, you know, they're not very good on defense. Shannon Dawson should have his way with them. But, you know, you can't just look past them. You have to come out and play. Uh, they are a real Power 5 opponent. But even if you want to uh, just take that one for granted and the Virginia game for granted, the, the other six are going to be pretty tough, including Boston College on the road the day after Thanksgiving. Okay? Uh, that's going to be, uh, you know, a big game for them. Uh, Miami never plays well the day after Thanksgiving in the cold. Going all the way back to the national championship teams where we needed Ed Reed miracles to get out of there. Okay. Um, so I, I think it's a little bit of a trap, LT. And uh, I saw, uh, and I'm not picking on to Corey Couch. Okay. I'm just mm -hmm. using this as an example. I saw an interception on a fourth down play where they had the ball at um, – Temple had the ball at their own 25-yard line. It was fourth, I think, at four, something mm -hmm. like that. They went for it. They threw the ball down the field. And 20 yards down the field to Corey Couch, instead of batting the ball down, makes the interception. Then I see Keontra Smith. I'm not picking on him either, but this was a way worse play. Um, come running off the bench, which you know you're not allowed to do. You know, you're not in the game. You, you can't come running off the bench to celebrate 
with the Corey Couch on the field. He draws a 15-yard penalty for excessive celebration of a play that I maintain never should have happened. And mm-hmm. now you've given up 35 yards of field position mm-hmm. needlessly. Um, all, if, if you had the situational awareness to knock the ball down, you've got the ball at their 25 going in. Instead, you got the ball at your own 45. Um, and you got a long way to go now. Uh, and there was a big difference. And they ended up not scoring any points mm-hmm. in that sequence. And I'm thinking to myself, Mario has to seize this moment. Like, this is a great teaching opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, to to get these guys back focused and aware of what's going on and understand that in a close game, which they will have some close games, a play like that might be the difference between winning and losing, you know? Um, so I want to see them tighten up here in this mm-hmm. open week. That that That's my thoughts. What, what do you, well, your I, thoughts? I can tell you this, a uh, play like that, especially, like you said, it's a definitely a teaching moment for Mario and that staff. Um you know, the game was pretty much at hand and, and things were going right, but you don't want to go backwards. And I'm sure Mario was on that. Um, you know, backwards is dumb penalties. Uh, backwards is losing contain. Uh, backwards is, uh, you know, letting guys run right by you without putting your hands on them, DBs. I mean, there's a lot of backwards that I'm sure Mario is addressing. Uh, I saw that too, and I said, "Oh, okay. That he'll get it. They'll, they'll, those guys will get an earful next week, and it's an off week, so you got a whole. <laughs> <laughs> That's even worse. You got a week and a half to to uh, for him to get on you. But those are teaching moments. Uh, the great thing is that it wasn't during the Florida State game. It wasn't during the Clemson game. It wasn't during the Georgia Tech game. This was Temple." where it pretty much had this game at hand, and uh, they were just flat out better than Temple at, um, at a lot of positions, and it showed. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Miami did what they were supposed to do, come out and dominate. I mean, the offensive line is playing great right now. The running backs, what can I say about those guys? Competition in that room, I hope it continues, because what happens when those guys get in, you don't know what to expect because – they're all different in a way, but they're all pretty explosive. Um, mm-hmm. The wide receivers are playing well. And on defense, you got to see some young defensive players. LT had a guy. so hard for me to call that guy LT. Uh, Leonard Thompson <laughs> had Tom, whatever his name, LT. I Taylor, know. Taylor, Taylor. Taylor, <laughs> Taylor, whatever. I mean, it's, it's, it's only room for a couple of LTs down here. And I, I got L- Lawrence Taylor beat on that one. Um, he played well. Bain played well. The guys are playing well. And that's a good thing. That is a really good thing because when they're playing well, that means they're out there on that practice field competing and they're getting better so that on Saturdays the game will be easier because it's nothing like going against a guy that knows the plays, knows all your good moves, all your bad moves, and you're competing and you're still winning and you're competing against him. So on Saturday when you go to play somebody else, this guy has no clue except what he sees on film and you dominate. So for those people out there to think I'm crazy, uh, (laughs) what's the difference between an offense getting the ball at the opponent's 25 yard line and getting the ball at its own 40, 45? That's a, that's a big difference because one penalty, one holding penalty drops you, puts you back in harm's way of maybe getting a safety or, or turning the ball over in your, your, um, your territory. Uh, 45 is a lot closer. You can call one or two plays. It, it's all about play calling. Well, I'm saying, like, if you have the ball at the Temple 25, yeah. uh-huh. you're thinking touchdown really quick. If oh, you yeah. have the ball at your own 45, yeah, you got a long way to go still. You got a long way to go. I mean, it's 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 a big difference, and especially it's a big difference when you shouldn't be there. You know, so it's that whole thing of, dang, we should be closer, but we're not. So yeah. <laughs> someone, who's this? He says, Garrett. Gary, for once. I agree with you? How about that? For once, I got something right. <laughs> let me let me drink drink water to that. Um, but uh, by, the hey, way, how about, this, by the way, you can get this cup here. It came oh, that's where. Nice, I like that. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. Yeah, that's a nice cup. <laughs> cool. So Lyndon Clemens is calling you the Boynton Beach coaching legend, man. That was a long time ago. I, yeah. I mean, I remember you when you were at Boynton Beach. You didn't have you didn't have any gray in your beard or anything. 
<laughs> well, that guy, Lyndon Clemens, is just, was the assistant principal there. He is, I, I like to give him credit for helping me secure Lamar Jackson. So oh, he's, wow. uh, yeah, he, he, he played a, a big part in that. I, he's a silent partner in that. Wow. <laughs> That's an important, important guy. Lyndon, I hope to meet you one day, man. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that wasn't for the University of Miami, but that was a big moment for Lamar, the coach, man. Uh, was. And Miami wasn't even recruiting them, so. Oh no, no. Um, I uh, well, they were, they were. They came in at the end and they said, "Hey, you know, uh, we want you to be a backup to Brad Kaya." And I told Lamar, <laughs> "Backup to Brad Kaya? Are you kidding me? Come on, bro." So you just kind of played on the heartstrings a little bit, but they were careful. I got to give it to them. They were careful not to say anything negative about me because they knew the relationship. <laughs> and they kind of tried to skirt around it a little bit. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, I had a job to do. So no, they didn't. With, I mean, with. they didn't do a very good job recruiting him at all. I mean, nobody had any beefs not getting Lamar Jackson. They may have come in and the whole thing at the end or whatever. But that was not a well-managed recruitment at that point in time at all. All right, let's uh, bring in our vo our voice of the fan, Bruce Warner. Uh there he is. What's up, you guys? Um, you so, Bruce, talk to us, man. What's the mood of the Canes fan here uh, coming off the Temple victory and chilling out here in the open week and getting ready to uh, play Georgia Tech? Well, it's 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 4-0, and which we haven't seen in a long time. Long so time. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, you know, we've had some really close games against bad teams the last couple of years. We got smoked by Middle Tennessee State last year. Mm. So this is not only we're, we're winning close games. We're not winning. We're winning, period. We're just blowing these guys out. Not not so much A&M, but still, without those two mistakes, they would have had, like, 19 points. So, mm -hmm. so far, so great. And I'm kind of thinking, okay, we're going to be 5-0. and oh, But I'm listening to Gary, and I'm thinking to myself, well, you know what? There were some mistakes. You hit on some of the mistakes. And one of the things I said the other day to somebody was, as great as I think uh, – Kobe Young is doing this year. He's had two or three drops right in his belly. Mm -hmm. And as the wide receiver coach, they need to fix that too because you know he can't do it against North Carolina or Clemson or anybody else. He can't. Why do you, Is that just a focus thing, Lamar? Because he makes pressing. great plays. Pressing. He's just pressing. You know, when you come into the year after the year you had last year with so much expectations on your shoulders, uh, you press. Uh, I can recall we played Arkansas. The game that Harris went at 99 yards, mm -hmm. uh, I dropped a touchdown pass that I usually could jump up and catch. You're pressing. You're trying too hard to do what you're supposed to do. And I, I actually felt that way because, I mean, I had that ball in my hands. I just didn't, didn't, didn't secure it. So I know what he's going through. It's just you have to get back to the basics and understand that there's a reason why you're the guy. Get back to that. And, um, you know, that, that catch he made down the – down the sideline, yeah. Um, that was a uh, he stretched out. That that was the the young that we we thought we'd be seeing the whole year. Right, but the ones he seems to be dropping are balls that when he catches it, it seems to me like he's thinking he's got to get down the field. They're like catches that he can get yards after the catch, as opposed to where he's like a jump ball or he's running near the sidelines. That's that to me. He just seems like for a split second he's thinking, "Okay, I'm going to get this and run," but he's not catching it. So that's a that's a focus thing, right? I mean, yeah, just... I always I always tell guys, hey man, listen, I'll take the catch first. No catch, no nothing. So right. catch the ball first, and we'll figure that out later. If you don't get in the yards, okay, fine. But right. you know, you got you got to catch it first and foremost. And right. that and, is looking. And on the, on the couch stuff. thing, couch probably thinking, I got another pick. I got another pick. Maybe he, at that split second, he's not thinking, "Be I ought to bat it down," because picks don't come every you, five plays. You got to be thinking. Oh, you got to be thinking, right? That's you got to be thinking ahead. You have to be. There is no time to be worrying about your personal stats. Yes. In, in, a, in, in a football game, you tell it. You tell a nineteen, twenty-year-old that, buddy. That's what I I'm understand, saying. man. I understand. Well, that's what I'm. <laughs> that's why I was asking you, like, like, what's the right answer there? Like, is it like I'm going to get my pick? No matter what, I don't care if it hurts my team. Like, like, what if that was a real game, Lamar? And, and you're like in the game in the fourth quarter. Oh, geez, I'm going to get my pick, and it ends up costing you 35 yards of field position. Like, that's not a joke. Like, that might be the difference between winning and losing. 
well, those things will be that situation will be addressed. You know, sometimes you try to cover every situation as a coach. Sometimes they escape you to that one situation. And that probably was one where he lost train of thought and maybe they hadn't gone over that situation. But, but does the DB coach happens. tell them on just before that, on fourth down and whatever, fourth and long, did they scream out, knock it down, knock it down? They don't do that, right? Uh, In high no. school they do probably. You shouldn't have to do that. I know, and the same thing with catching punts inside the five. Uh, that, but that, again, it. again, that that goes to those guys having that situation occur. Now you learn from it, and right. again, it happened against Temple, so yeah. everything sets up perfectly. Right. And if we saw that situation again, I'm pretty sure. Remember, he has a whole off day, off week and mm -hmm. couple next week for them to go over that. I'm pretty right. sure that won't happen again. But yeah, coaches yeah. love those things, right, Lamar? Like, <laughs> they, they love having things like this that they can teach in an open week like this and, and oh, yeah. try to make the team better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you call it teaching moments for sure. You know, when yeah. you – because a lot of times when you're doing drills, like for me, example, uh, my drills are specific to uh, the, to the game. I don't do drills to – to, to waste time. I like I see guys need to get more separation. We're in, we're doing separation drills. If I see guys needing to learn or work on getting off the ball um, through press, we're working on that. If I see guys having problems getting in and out of breaks, we're working on that. So you you do things that are specific to the game, but also situation. And you have a lot of situations, especially a receiver, two minutes, uh, four minutes. You know, you have all these situations. Now they change the rules. There are things that I'm pretty sure that Miami is going over, and this this off week is a good time to to um, to teach those things and and to nail them home. Yeah. Did, did right, Allen I mean, play? Did, what, what's, why didn't he play last week? The running back, Gary. Do you know Jay Allen? He didn't get in because the other three guys were ahead of him on that that I week. Well, I they mean, they played. they got four guys. You can't play everybody all all the time. I mean, well, they all played. They all played like the week and, before. And, you know, maybe there was a little bit more to it that you know was private. I don't you know, but 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 I mean, you know, you've got Mark Fletcher coming back off injury. You want to get him back into the swing of things. The other guys are playing great. You know, mm -hmm. Parrish and Don Chaney. Uh, so they just didn't get to to you know to that in that game for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, you know, I think we'll see him down the road yeah, for sure. Yeah. But um, just be before we jump to running backs, I, I do want to talk a little bit more, more about Colby Young because, mm -hmm. Lamar, the catch radius that mm -hmm. he showed in the, in the Temple game mm -hmm. was, like, other level, man. Like, 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 one of them he pushed off unnecessarily and got called for it, but he, should, he didn't need to do it. But when he goes up to get mm -hmm. the ball – I mean, that's like – that's elite stuff, man, in my opinion. Let me tell you what that also is. That is a quarterback's best friend. When you have a guy that can do stuff like that, they don't mind throwing it to you. They don't mind the pressure's on. They know where you are, and they don't mind. I mean, that's what it's all about. I coach a guy like that named Devontae Parker. I you throw the ball up, up to him, he's mm -hmm. going to make it for you. He is going to make it. It doesn't matter how many guys around, he would make that play for you. So what what – Quarterbacks, when they drop back, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, where is number nine? So right now, TVD is thinking, where is Kobe? Where is number four? I mean, where is it? Let's let's see where he is. And, let's, and if you look out there and you see him matched up on a smaller DB, give him an opportunity. Give him a chance. Uh, that's what it's all about. The one-on-one -on -one matchups make them say, okay, well, okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna have two guys over there covered. Now that hurts you in the run game. And it also hurts you in the pass game, too, because you got Restrepo. You got those other guys over there who are chomping at the bits to get the ball, too. So it is a perfect storm right now. He just has to continue to get better and make the routine catches. That's all it's about. Yeah, and, you know, and, you know, they're, catch, they're coming back for the ball, too. They're really yeah. helping TVD out. They're not leaving him out to dry. They're coming back yeah. for the ball. I know Kobe did that and Restrepo. And the other thing, just Lamar, quickly, these guys are getting wide open. There, there's not a lot of corners draped on our receivers like in the past. These guys are wide open a lot of times. Well, I like, I like the the concepts from the offensive coordinator. I think yeah. uh, you 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 combine that with the fact 
that the O line is playing pretty dang good right now. Mm-hmm. Now the quarterback has time to make those throws, to look over his progressions. He's not rushing himself to make that throw um, like he had to do in the past because we all saw what last year was pretty bad. Pretty bad. But this year they're they're playing a lot better on that old line, and that's helping everything in the run game and the pass game and the quarterback's psyche. That's yeah. just my opinion. Um, real quick, um, we, we got a visitor in the lobby who I want to go to here, but I, 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 while we're on the subject of receivers, Lamar, uh, Zach Lesnar is asking us about uh, Xavier Restrepo and why he's playing at such an elite level. What's he doing? What have you seen from him that makes him so good? Restrepo has been sensational so far this season. Well, I'll tell you this. He has that mindset. You know, I've talked to him on numerous occasions. Some For some reason – I see him out once a week at a, at a restaurant or something. I mean, he's, you know, him and his parents. I mean, so we talk and we text and he has, he, he, he wants it. He believes he wants it. He wants to be a leader. He wants to be, uh, his, his goal is he, I told I tell him all the time, stay focused on your goal. Your goal is to get to the next level. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, don't worry about all the rest of the stuff, you know, don't worry about being the, the sexy girl in the club right now. You do what you do. You keep making plays. You keep working hard. You And like I told him, working hard is contagious. Because if you continue to work hard, those other guys will too. All right. Uh, we'll get to more positions and more guys as the show goes on. But it's time to bring in our first uh, guest of the night. And um, it's Uncle Tolbert and his nephew. Oh has been playing some incredible football. Uh, true freshman Reuben Bain is the second highest graded defensive player on the Miami Hurricanes four games into the season uh, as a true freshman, um, which is just an amazing accomplishment. Uh, there he is walking around somewhere. I don't know where you are, Tolbert, but it, it, I, I think I see some palm trees behind you. And uh, Welcome back to the Lamar Thomas Show. No, I'm... I'm- just honored to finally be on Lamar Thomas show. <laughs> We've been beefing about this for the last two years, year and a half. He's been doing me dirty. And yeah, I'm yeah. a big brother. He's doing his big brother dirty. You see, he ain't say nothing. Yeah, Tolbert, he's been imitating you for two years. <laughs> but I mean why imitate me when you had the real thing? You know how yeah, to find man. me. <laughs> you know, it it's it's I, I go to say hello to him and I get <laughs> When I'm going to get on the show, man, all I know is every week I see you with some other guys on the show, and I'm standing here. I'm your, I'm like your big brother. So you're you on the show men, men don't get in their feelings, but I got in mind messing with him. He made me get in mind. Men don't get in their feelings. <laughs> hey, Tobe. All right, so let's get yeah. to it. You know, I, I here's, the, here's the thing. We, we all want to know, you know, and we, I, every guest that comes on the show, 99% of them have been Miami guys. So I started this thing off by asking, why Miami? You know, why, what was it about Miami that you and the rest of those guys helped start? Yeah. I, you, I got to Miami because me and Melvin actually was best friends. And they had a scholarship left. I was going to have to go to Alabama or Tennessee and try Because I played wide receiver in the Wishmore offense. Now, I was the best blocking receiver in the country, and all a bunch of Melvin Long 70, 80 yard runs, I threw the last block that sprung. But I was, and I got that actual scholarship by Coach Snellenberg, Coach Axe, because I was athletic, played both ways, and um, was, did a few things on the track hurdles, high jump, long jump, triple jump. So that's how I got my scholarship. I was the last guy signed in that class. I mean, and I actually I mean, got that- it because Tommy Streeter, Went to Colorado mm-hmm. instead of going to Miami, so the scholarship was left open, and that's how I got to Miami. That's that's what happened. And, and that was uh that was eighty three, right? Yes, sir. We so was on the original those... national championship team. We were we was the uh, scout team there. I think it's only like five or six guys that didn't get red shirted. But I myself and all those other guys, we wasn't ready to play because every time I made right. a tackle, my shoulder was hurt, my finger <laughs> hurt, my wrist hurt. <laughs> My ankle hurt, my thigh hurt because I wasn't physically strong. Northwestern, mm-hmm. we just played football at that time. 
we had no weight room. We just played hard nosed football. And um so we was behind when it far as came to being strong. You know, some guys had strength programs in high school. We didn't have one at Northwestern at that time. Amazing. You know, you, you get in there and you know, you red shirt, you talked about that, how you know it, that red shirt year is tough, boy. It it, it it you know, was it tough for you? Having that red shirt year, you being from Miami, was it was it tougher you being down there? Was you got guys it, saying, hey, man, why you ain't playing? It was actually tougher on Melvin than me because okay. Melvin was the star coming out of high school. So, like, it was once upon a time, and after our red shirt, it wasn't as bad our red shirt year, but once we came off red shirt, I was a starter after the – um after uh. I started after the Auburn game. I started mm-hmm. against Michigan, Michigan. Then that, and then against um, Florida, I picked the ball off and ran it back to cover the spread. And I know, <laughs> I know some of y'all got some money off that, and y'all ain't giving me my cut. But I had to cover that spread that night, and um, it was tough on Melvin. Actually, not me because I, you know, nobody really expected anything from me but me and my, you know, my mother and my father. And the boys out the neighborhood, they, you know, because a lot of guys was like, they said I would never play at Miami, but mm. I had work ethic, determination. Coach Alexander, Hubbard Alexander believed in me, convinced Coach Snellenberg to give me this scholarship, and the rest was history. But it wasn't well, that's tough what on I was, me because I, yeah, talk to me. That's what I was going to ask you. I mean, you know, like you said, the, the guys in the neighborhood, you know, was it tough? You know, it like you say, it wasn't tough, but it was tough in a, in a way because those guys are saying, "Hey, man, you ain't gonna never play." You know, you're not. It was you're just not gonna a few guys, you know, because it's just a few guys because you know how the hood is, is haters. But mm-hmm. the ones who really fool with me just, you know, excited that I got that opportunity, and they, they knew me, the guys who actually knew me knew I wasn't gonna let them down, and um, I was just honored. And we didn't know Miami was going to blow up like that, but the rest history. Yeah, those guys in the neighborhood, LT. They didn't yeah, so they, 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 they he got now, so the, neighborhood was, the neighborhood was my worst critic. So <laughs> when I come back, my first year started, you got, they don't want to talk about no play I made. You missed, ta- you missed that tackle on third and eight. You let the man catch the first down. I was like, well, God damn, what about the plays I made? Uh, we uh, didn't want to talk about that. So out of that first year, I was determined they ain't going to be talking to me about no bad plays no more. So, you know, I got in the lab in that weight room, Reagan on, and um, Bill Ferran, Reagan on left, and then we had Bill Ferran and, and um, got strong, Pat Jacob. So we had, we had some, it, you know, we, we was determined. And I just coming from Northwestern. That's the type of football we played. That's the neighborhood, and it's the hood. So that, that's why a lot of these kids now they're being pampered by their mothers. Mothers won't get out the way. They don't want you to yell at the kid. And these kids, like Prime say, they 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 not they cats now. They are not dogs anymore. I played with. I played in high school when we got to Miami. Mel and Melvin used to look at guys and like, how did he get here? We got Johnny better than him, Mark better than him. And it just, we just wanted to play football. I love the game. Wow. Had a- well, I'm going to tell you who's not a cat. That's Nephew. I hope you can hear me. Your picture froze up here for a minute. There you are. Uh, nephew's not a cat, Colbert. No, he, no he, he's my little cousin. Me and his mother, oh, cousin, I, I'm our sorry. first cousin, and then he, on his daddy's side, we are actually cousins also again. So that's how that goes. Everybody thinks he's my nephew. He's cousin on for his cousin, old name, Herman, cousin, sweet nephew, man, whatever you want to call him is good, but, but he's not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He got. He could be, be, be a lion or a tiger. He has they a better me. mindset than me. Yes, sir. So, question for you: Why why did you move to uh to DB? What what was that? What did that? How did that happen? When they signed me, they told me I was gonna play de- defensive back. But I thought I was growing up. I thought I was James Lofton. 
six two fast mm. track background and all that stuff. People say you play corner. Then I didn't know how to play corner because I I played in high school when we played somebody that they had a receiver that was good. Coach um, Askew would put me at corner. That's why I want to thank my man because I I didn't I was able to do I didn't even know I could do that because in Little League when I played Little League everybody on the offense was a starting defense except me. That's when I was a running back <laughs> and I was the only one because tackling you have to want to tackle. Right, and I at that time I, when I was small, I didn't want to tackle nobody. I want to run the ball. But when I got to college, they say you play corner. Okay, I play corner now. That's why I would say you play, you play. But how I told you play, you play. So we, I think we lost you for a I second there, man. He needed his help on offense and moved him to offense. Lonzo was a bad man in high school. Bad man. So did Northwestern play Columbus at that time? Y'all still there? Yeah, we're still here. We're here. You hear? Hello. We hear you. We hear you. We hear you. What happened to the phone? The system was, <laughs> they froze. This is like oh, this is like quite a tour of something you're giving us tonight, Colbert. <laughs> this is the clearest so, picture, and he says he doesn't hear us. Oh, wow. <laughs> Can you hear us, Dover? It's working. It's We're working. here. You're working. We're here. <laughs> click in, click out. Well, I wanted to know, you know if Columbus played back in the day, if they played Northwestern. Yeah, you know, while we wait for him to come back, uh, you know, Tolbert was a big corner. Yeah. Before big corners were in vogue in, in football. Uh yeah. You know, now people would, would, would kill kill for a corner like Tolbert Bain, you know? Um, yeah. I hear him. Yeah, today, like, today's game, you know. Y'all got I'm here. We, we got, got you. We're here. Tolbert, I was saying that you were a big corner before big corners became, like, a, a trend in football. Like, you, you yeah. were, like, a pace setter in that regard. Yeah, if I was coming out now, I might have made a few dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct, my friend. <laughs> uh, I had a question. I wanted to know if Northwestern actually played Columbus back then. Yeah, we played them. Uh, that's when Melvin hurt his hamstring against Edison two weeks prior. Mm -hmm. And when I would bring the play in, I would hear the offensive linemen and the running backs arguing over who's supposed to block Highsmith. And I'm like, are y'all serious? Lonzo was a dog, man. Y'all, I'm telling you, he probably was in the mold of Hugh Green and Lawrence Taylor. He was wow. he was the bad man. But Howard told him, just like Howard told me you're gonna play Kona, Howard told him you're gonna play fullback. And the rest history. You did what Howard said. So you guys get there and you see this class. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys talked and you 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 guys came in and you, it's almost like you guys said, okay, this is what this is this is the guys that are gonna turn this thing around. This is the guys that are gonna make this thing happen. The blueprint was in place already because Howard mm -hmm. didn't play. That year we did three a days. So can you imagine a kid <sighs> eight? Jesus. Three a days. Whew. Three a days now. And then probably between nine, nine, nine thirty, we back on the field. Then you go home for a little while, and then you're back on the field like two thirty three. So the blueprint it was already in place, and they did the three a days because the year before we got there, Miami we were seven and four, mm -hmm. and they lost the game in the fourth quarter. So that's where that four fingers come from. People don't know that, and how mm -hmm. it was like. We're not losing games in the fourth quarter no more because we're going to be in top condition, top notch shape. And that's where that stuff was born from. Yeah. And everybody stole that too. <laughs> yeah. And see, like, when, and see, we, the, the, the tradition carried on because when we got there, the upperclassmen taught you how to go to class, how to skip class. They taught you everything, <laughs> what to do, what not to do. And then I'll never forget this moment as long as I live. We're getting ready to play Nebraska. And um, 
my homeboys come down there, Kurt them come down there on it. There was an MB5 little motorbike came out. So they trying to teach me how to ride it. I have no idea this guy even know my name. He said, hey, babe, get off that thing. We need everybody. Man, y'all get this motorbike, man. That's Jay Brophy talking to me. I don't <laughs> even know he know my name. But he, when he said that, that, you know, that touched my heart. And, and, and I made sure I treated all freshmen when they came in with that same type of love. Where no matter what year I was in, I made sure the young boys were all right and they understood what we was doing in Miami. He didn't have to talk to me. I wasn't finna play. I'm being red shirt. But he told me we need everybody. So that made me feel special. And he was a hell of a ball player. We went in the third round of the Dolphins, right? I think so. Yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, you know, Bane, when I when I think back when I got to the University of Miami, how in love the city, when I say the city, um the the city of Miami was in love with us and it had a lot to do with you guys because um, you know, you guys are from the city and to see their own go there and have success, you know, they 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 just jumped on. I mean, and, and, and you guys never shied away from introducing us in the city. And I appreciate that because, oh. you know, it, it showed great love for, you know, for us as freshmen and sophomores and juniors and seniors being able to go in the city and, and being able to, uh, a lot of people knew us. And it was it was just wow. great love down here. Right, because there is, we we not selfish people. So we want everybody to know y'all all so that y'all don't have to be with us to be able to move around in the town. Mm -hmm. And that's that was part of what we was doing, you know, because it was a time when the guys like to get in the clubs, we didn't pay to get in the club. But they wouldn't go because all we tell them all you do is when we go in and just say hi to the, the guy at the door. So you don't have to wait on me and Melvin when we when it's time to go to the club. <laughs> you know, when they start learning that, they start, everybody start being able to move around on their own. Right. Town loved it. And that's like right now the Dolphins. Dolphins haven't won in so long. This town is going crazy, man. And I love to see it. So I'm pulling for them to do well. I hope they can turn it into something. But this town is, is electric right now. We doing well. Again, they're doing well. This this is what it's supposed to be. It's been a long time coming for both of us. Yep. It's, it is about time, and it's and it's capturing the country because a lot of people talking to dolphins, and a lot of people talking about and the expression that we've all heard. The U is back. We're not back yet. We're on the right track. Oh, we got we got a few more. We got there. a couple more people to take care of, and then we'll know we're back. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we hey, Cobra, let's talk a little bit about cousin Ruben. Uh, he has come in as a true freshman, and I mean, I know you had high expectations and hopes for him as did your entire family uh but he's basically starting right now with mesador out and he's the second highest ranked defensive player on this team at the moment and uh has just been uh unbelievable for for a true freshman what how has the family felt about how he started out his career at miami everybody's excited very giddy and um, I'm just so happy for him because he's he's been mature since he was a, like a little kid. He doesn't do, doesn't do a lot of talking. The guy you see now, that's the kid he was when he was small, and he worked hard and he's very intelligent, school wise, and any any you know he's very intelligent. So he has the correct mindset. I didn't have that mindset when practice was over. Where the where we going tonight, and where the girl? <laughs> he he not he. I don't think that's what he does. I don't. I may it, he might be quietly doing it. I don't know. I, he don't have that mindset. Quietly he, doing. He's always he's always looking to figure out how to be better, and I commend him for that. And I I love everything about him. He's he's very um classy, and oh man, he works hard, and everything he's gonna get. He's going to earn. He's going to deserve all accolades, and I'm so happy for him. Yeah, he's got a motor. Strong. And, that's, and that's what you guys used to play with, motors and attitudes and chips on your shoulder. 
And for the last yeah. 20 years, we've seen that intermittently, but not constantly. This kid doesn't let up for five seconds. He's And I saw him in practice before the season started, October. Um, yeah. And I went back and I told everybody before the spring game, which is the week before when it was alumni. Were you there the week before? Yeah. yeah I think I yeah. saw you there. So yeah, anyway, yeah. so um, and I saw him there and he's just in the backfield constantly. He might not make every tackle, but he's putting pressure on your quarterback. He's collapsing that pocket and he's causing problems on the off for the offensive line. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. He wants he wants to be great. And and anybody that can help him get to that goal, he's more than willing to listen, you know, and um his work ethic is just I worked hard doing that, like I say, doing the two and a half hours, three hours, whatever we out there. But when that practice was over, where where are we going tonight and where are the girls? He don't do that. So that's going to help him to get to where he's trying to get to. Maybe but how did he get so strong? He's so, he, uh, like, he is a powerful kid for a true freshman. Gary, you see his legs? Right, he, They're like trees. He has those, he has those trunk legs. And yes. that's, the, that's the work ethic because they say he came in benching – what like two fifth? What what it was? I don't want to get it wrong, but whatever it was, it was a massive jump in the weight room on his bench press. So that's that's attributed to his his work ethic. Maybe Tolbert, or just another guess. I'm not being a psychologist or anything, but maybe because a lot of people were saying he's too short, he's too small, he can't do it. Boy, he's improving people. Wrong. Wow. Um, I'm telling you, when you when you had that fire in your gut, and everybody tell you something you can't do. A dog go down there and find out. Yeah, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna prove y'all wrong. I'm telling you. They say I would never play. How, man? Y'all serious? I love the game too much. I know how to work. My daddy taught me how to work. Then the group, the guys I grew up with, we worked. So I knew nothing but how to work. A little league team, high school team, we worked. Yep. Did so he have anyone, weights? He's one of those people. Did he have weights at home in his garage or whatever growing up? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But like I said, it, well, I if I'm not, this I kid is know. strong, man. This kid he's is a strong. strong, true freshman. Yeah, he is strong. His, his dad is a strong, was a strong person. Played high school football and played at all. Uh, thing was Morris Brown. And his mom has good size, and she's got a nice build on. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming she's strong also. So it's in the blood. Yep, it's in the blood, and we're happy for your entire family because we love watching this kid. And, every, and before we even started the spring uh, practices, almost everybody to a person said, "That's the kid I want to see." And there's a lot of great two freshmen coming in, Matt, Matt we know it, whatever. We all wanted to see what what, what your what your cousin could do, and we're seeing it. We're really seeing it. He's good. I'm not surprised. I just, I'm just excited and happy for him. And I just want to keep him. I want him to keep it going. And then when it's time, when he do go to the league or whatever, when it's his turn, in the first round, we need the Bane name in the first round. <laughs> make me so happy, so happy. Well, just as long as you stay away from him when the games are over, because your <laughs> mindset might still be let's go party. Cause, no, because I, I, I know you had a lot of your friends. I don't want none of that bad shit bad, excuse me, <laughs> to rub off on him. I don't want none of that on him. I want him to stay focused how he is. Hey, hey I got a question for you, Bane. Oh, you man. know, since, since Mario came back, uh, you know, he's opened the door for a lot of us to come back. You know, obviously over the last couple of years, 20 years, um, probably more than that, it's been in and out as far as the the access for us alumni. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, him opening up doors? He said it from day one. Yeah, he, he said it and he's living up to it. You're all former guys are more than welcome around practice in the facility. It's just, you know, cause it was some, some coaches we've had there. They didn't bother you, but then you could tell that you really wasn't wanted around. Them. He don't feel intimidated by no former players. And he's great for what he's he's what we need, and he's restoring us, getting us back to them glory days. And I'm just happy he's here, and I love he's giving a few guys, former players, the opportunity to work with him now and there. That's great in itself, and um, we he's going we're going in the right direction. I love it. They're gonna do the new facility when they're supposed to break ground on that. 
hopefully in the next few months. I mean, okay. Uh, they I'm need to hurry up. Yeah, I'm ready need. for that. You know, it used but to be a, a band. It used to be where I was the trendsetter. I'd go down and get some stuff, and everybody like, hey, man, that when that came out, but now you the man. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> boy, Lamar, I don't know, boy. We got to go to the round table with you, man. You tripping, man. <laughs> you always got on something fresh, my friend. You the man this, now. This, is, this shirt, two years old. Hey, hey look, Bane. Yeah. You got the juice now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, man. <laughs> well, oh, hey, man. man. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I mean, and what would you like to see out of this season? What 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 would be good for you for this season for you? What would be okay? What would be good? What would be great? Yeah, what would be, be great? Getting the getting the playoffs. Okay. Now, right there at the door, that's acceptable. But I'm greedy. I want some playoffs, and right. then, you know, can't tell me we can't do it because if that line keep holding up like it's doing, and those receivers have made great leaps and bounds since Beard has got them. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's all beard or it's just growing up a year older. I love everything I'm seeing. And the defense is aggressive. And that corner who came from Oklahoma, he was God sent. Yeah, he helps a thousand percent. And shit, I'm greedy. Mm-hmm. Ain't think we was going to win in 83. <laughs> That's true. So the, anything can happen. We just, the, best, the biggest thing, and I heard y'all talking about Restrepo. The biggest thing with Restrepo is, He's healthy. And if he stays healthy, we that offense gonna go because he every year when he got hurt, the last two years, the offense took a few steps back. Mm. Think about it. All y'all think about it. y'all big Kane fans, so y'all seen it. He yeah. is healthy. And he like Lamar said, he has the desire, the work ethic, and I want that kid to receive some great benefits too when it's over. But he's healthy. Mm-hmm. And I hope he can stay healthy. And he's got the right, he's got the right best friend and roommate too, the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah cause if, hey, if I if Melvin was the quarterback and I was receiving, he was gonna throw it to me too. Yeah, that, that means I should have room with Gino. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He still threw you the ball, man. Stop being <laughs> greedy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that in there, dog. I had to throw that in. There. <laughs> hey, hey, I went out. Hey, I went out to see him, to stay with him for a week and a half, for a reason. Before the season started, believe that. that, that so you stole out of Mike playbook, and that's what Mike did with Steve. I sure did. I sure did. <laughs> Mike Everybody went out was like, man, hey, man, what you saving? St. Paul. They were like, man, what you saving your money for? Don't worry about it. I was saving my money up, got my flight out there. We were like brothers out there. We were like brothers. I knew, hey, I knew he was going to be. We set, I set the tone early. Hey, Gino, what I got? That's what I would say, what I got. And he would say, man, you got it out. All right. I knew in his mind, he's thinking about that out. Hey, G, what I got? You got the post. When that, when that offensive line sat down a little bit, I knew he – just like we talked about earlier with Young, when you can make plays for your quarterback, when it's on the he line, he's going to throw you. it up. He's going to give you a chance because for you. he knows you're going to do right by that ball being up in there. You're going to go get it. And so he's going to give you that everything. opportunity. There might be two, three guys around you, but if he trusts you and he's seen you make those plays, oh, it's – so expect to see a lot of passes thrown to Young down the field in one-on-one situation, maybe one-on-two, because he he's shown that he has a great catch rate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He believes yeah. in him. He believes in him. He know what my ball has a chance of being caught. Mm-hmm. That's how Steve was with Mike and with Melvin. He get in trouble. Melvin was going to half-ass block and then slide <laughs> out to the flat. And Steve that's was throw that's the exactly ball. what we talked about when we had Melvin on the show. That he it, that was the play. He would fake he like that block, was the play. which he, wasn't going to happen. That we talked about. He that. wasn't trying. He was going to go like he going to block him, and he going to spin off and then and, and, and clap his hands, and then Steve drop it off to him. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what Steve Walsh told us? 
You don't have no choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He knew what was going on, just like Gino knew what was going on. They know. They're going to somebody that's going to make a play for them. That's right. That's right. Well, yeah. Tobert, man, we, we definitely appreciate you coming on tonight, man. And uh, I know I it's appreciate all finally getting the opportunity, man. Don't do your brother like this no more. It's been too goddamn long I had to wait, man. <laughs> Boy, you something else, homie. Little, homie. little big brother, you something else, man. <laughs> Hey man, you know what? It's always been love for you. Even when, even when you told me, if you don't come here, wherever you go, we gonna kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and that's real. Told Michael Burns the same thing. I asked him, "You can play with us, play against us, or we, and we gonna beat that ass." <laughs> I definitely appreciate you, man. All right, man. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. Y'all enjoy the rest of your show, man. And thanks for having me, man. Thank you, Tony. But I'm telling you, Jay Brophy told me, get off that thing. I Man, I felt like I was, get, here, y'all get this motorbike up and down here. As a matter of fact, go on back to the city with that bike. <laughs> that was well, love, man. We have love for each other, all the classes, all the generations, and that makes me feel good every time we get together for something, man. Always a pleasure. It's great to see you, Well, well Tobin, to know you were on that 83 team, right on. I got to tell you, I, I apologize, but as I was sitting up in the booth watching you yeah. guys run on the field, I said, yeah. man, there's some old-ass dudes down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Old ass. And, and my wife said, hey, you're, you're only five years removed from them. <laughs> <laughs> That'll hold you. That'll hold you. <laughs> it did. Hey, man, much love, Tober. All right, much love. Thanks, fella. Have All right, Tober, thank you. Boy, is he a character. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, let's regroup uh, by hearing from our friends at Caneswear. Welcome, Welcome to Caneswear. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Caneswear has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at caneswear.com. Caneswear, the spot Miami fan shop. Always great to go to Caneswear. I think I'm going to go tomorrow. I don't have any hearings or anything. I think I will go to there. L Lamar froze up on us. So let me put this picture up on the screen and oh, talk about Caneswear for a, for a moment here. And uh, guys, what you are looking at is the greatest Miami Hurricane store that's ever existed. I mean, it's bigger, it's better. Um, you know, they were, they were outgrowing their old store. So they moved down the plaza uh, for a little bigger space. And um, you could see they have just about everything that you could possibly want as a hurricane fan t-shirts jerseys polos hoodies hats um flags decals magnets um they have all sizes for men women kids babies they even have gear for pets at caneswear um so um if you want to tailgate next week before the georgia tech game uh you can go by caneswear they'll even hook you up with some tents and tables and chairs for your tailgating needs. Um, it is an experience to go shopping at Caneswear because it's more than a store. And now in this new expanded location, they have the largest selection of Miami Hurricane stuff that you will find anywhere. So they're at 2655 South University Drive in Davie. You see the banner behind Bruce's big head there. Um, they're right next to the spot of sub shop. I had to get that in Bruce. Um, you know, and if you're not here in South Florida, wow, that's a nice wallet. Yeah, this is what I got. This is, I need another one. That's why I'm going tomorrow. I've had two of these. They're leather. They're wow. beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. They sell them there. But uh, 2655 South University Drive in Davie, or you can go to caneswear.com. All right, waiting for Lamar to resurface here. I don't uh, Oh, there he is. We got you back, LT. That's right. Well, when you when there people you are. are calling while you I'm doing the I'm doing the show from my phone and people are calling, stop it. <laughs> stop it. Yeah, I have clients texting me. <laughs> um stop it. all right, LT, do you want to um 
you ready to talk a little bit about some of our other sponsors tonight uh, yeah, that yeah. that have joined the fray here? And I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna remember to put some logos up on the screen. I you know, like you know, I'm not gonna screw up like last week. We'll pay some um, bills. We'll talk about Williamson Cadillac, who just joined us. We appreciate it, Mr. Uh, Ed Williamson, uh, for being a sponsor of the show. Uh, you know, I, I love the service down there. Bought two cars from down there, one for me and one for my wife, and they do an outstanding job down there. I mean, uh, the coaches, I think the coaches uh, lease cars from them. Uh, it's been for years the establishment for the coaches at the University of Miami. So, uh, Jermaine Chambers works down there in the finance department. He actually was selling cars at one point. Now he's moved up to the finance department. A little too big time for me. Now I don't talk as much because he's always working wow. hard, but they do an outstanding job down there at Williamson Cadillac. Down way down there in US one past the Dayland Mall. Woo, it's down there. <laughs> It is down there. And how about the Florida Beach Bowl, Lamar? Um, new bowl game coming yeah, uh, to Drive. Bowl. It's we'll coming to uh, Drive Pink Stadium uh, here uh, in December. And uh, great idea for them to uh, take care of the historically black colleges and mm -hmm. and, cre and create this bowl game for for them. Um, so, um, LT, my, so. Go ahead. Now, guys, I was going to say, tell us a little bit about the, the, the Florida Beach Bowl. Okay, good. All right. South Florida, are you ready for the, the highly anticipated Florida Beach Bowl scheduled for December 13, 2023 at 7.30 at DRB Pink Stadium, P-N-K Stadium, I call it Pink, in the city of Fort Lauderdale. This inaugural event features a showcase of historically black colleges and universities, HBCU, from the SEAC and the CIAA football programs, battling it out on the sun-drenched shores of South Florida. The bowl game is all about uniting and showcasing Broward County as a whole. In addition to the main event, the Florida Beach Bowl is hosting a golf tournament, which I will be participating, a 5K run, which I will not be participating, and a community concert and various special events all designed to engage and uplift our community. For more information, visit www.floridabeachbowl.com. Are we allowed to say who started this game yet, LT, or is that Not still yet. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have him on the show. All right. I have him on the show and then we'll we'll go from there. We'll have him on the show. I'm gonna get him on soon. As soon as as soon as all the contracts and everything is signed, he's just waiting, and boom, he'll appear. Okay, the Miami guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait till we could talk about that. Um, and the Lamar Thomas Show is also sponsored by the law firm of Ratson and Fatsadomo, where uh, clients can get aggressive, and I mean aggressive, legal representation from skilled criminal defense lawyers. Uh, you don't ever want it. <laughs> for sure. Um, but sometimes things just happen uh, to, you know, in day-to-day -day life and, and you need somebody to help you get out of a jam and uh, Ratson and Faxodomo will absolutely uh, do that. Um, so check them out if you happen to fall into a situation such as that. I, I probably need these guys. I need their address because I'm going to kill Kelvin Harris for these comments that he's been making on here. <laughs> he looks like he looks like the fly, and he's talking about me being an alien. <laughs> he's too much. We have to ban him from the show, though. <laughs> um, and I'm going to put the I'm going to put the number up. Here we go. For, yes. For those for those that uh, that that want to just store it away somewhere in your notes or in your phone. Uh, 305 600 3519. They're down at Tiger Tail Avenue. Uh, so if you you know need help, they will fight for you, as the the, uh, the banner there says. And also, um, also, if your kid is in college and he gets in trouble, Mickey Miss Ratson does a lot of work with college students to help them uh, get out of trouble. So great law firm. I've dealt I dealt with Mickey a long time ago. We're good friends. Um, they, she has done an outstanding job. You, you probably seen her, and you didn't realize it was her on a lot of big cases down here in South Florida, criminal cases. And she has a high percentage of winning. So uh, the law firm is doing well. 
What juror is going to go against her, Lamar? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, she's a gator. Oh, now everybody needs to go she, against she's her. A gym. <laughs> she's a gym. <gator. laughs> All right. Um, let me get back to, you know, while we're, we're waiting for our next guest here, let's get back to some of these comments for a minute. Um, let me see. There was one, uh, Joel, uh, Joel Hager was asking us to talk a little bit about who is the best running back right now, not potential, mm. but the best running back right now on the team. And I don't know if LT still with us. Picture I mean, how could it not be Paris? Look what he's doing. Oh, there. Well, my question would be, why do we have to rank them? Like, why yeah. does it have to be? Why does it have to be Lamar one, two, three, four? Hey, I can tell you this, Joe. I'm excited about who's getting in the game. I mean, yeah. the great thing is you got a stable of guys. We've had one, two guys, but this is like four or five guys that you don't even. I mean, when they get in the game, they're hungry. It's competition. As this week, they're probably competing against each other for playing time. Obviously. You know, last week one didn't play, but it's his job to come back and compete. And uh, I'm I'm enjoying it because it's what it's doing the defensive coordinators. It's probably giving them gray hair because you got to not only you got to prepare for this this these wide receivers. You know, this offensive line you got to prepare for a run game, and this is supposed to be what type of air raid uh, offense? Well, it's an air raid offense, but it is they 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 utilize the run. And they're doing pretty damn good. Yeah, and and, and you, you see Johnson get in there for a little bit. Yes. But people think they have the angle on him, and they don't because he just goes right around them. He is blazing fast. I mean, he is – that's what you call a change of pace running back. Wow, is he good. I, I like what I've seen, but it all starts with those with those offensive linemen. Man. Yep. And that's that's hey, you get to do this because that offensive line is playing lights out. They're doing what you know what we haven't seen over the last couple of years. You know, we've seen guys get beat, you know, we've seen guys miss blocks, we've seen guys jump off sides, we've seen holding, we've seen all kind of stuff. But you know what? Because Maribel, he was excited when I talked to him before the season. I see why. I yeah. really truly see why. And he I think he, he knowing him. He took last year to heart because he has always been known as a great motivator, great offensive line coach. And they, they let him down last year. They let him down. But this year, those guys are playing very well. You know, we haven't talked once so far about third and short failures, fourth down <laughs> failures. Not one time. Oh, the two, yeah, I saw this guy. Like, we got we, we, we to address this, though. <laughs> Come on, I, man. I had a client talking to me. I didn't even hear what he said. But I know yeah, what that's, that is. That's a, that's a movie. Yeah, it's a, a long time ago. Juice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tupac was in that movie. Yep. Yeah. It was, that's a famous line. You got the juice now. Hey, dog, man. I love you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Shelvin's quotes are, are the funniest. T Dog just said it's from the movie Juice. Yeah. So the Omar. Omar Elks. <laughs> yes. And yeah, that that's the the brothers. We 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 grew up with that movie. So, you know, forgive us. I'm sorry. We we shouldn't have left you out like that. I should have said. Nobody backs baby in the corner. And then you guys have been like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Look, Lamar, people are, asking about, people are asking about the policy of former players on the sideline. Yes. Um, I haven't heard too much chatter about that this year. Do, do, where does that stand right now? Because you mean, don't see it too many guys well, down they, there. Well, they have uh, policies that, you know, uh, let's see. If you're a Hall of Famer, if you're in the Ring of Honor, uh, all American, uh, playing now, uh, you can go down there. Uh, to be honest with you, some guys have brought it up, you know, back in the day. Yeah. When we were younger, standing down there for three and a half hours, I could do that. But now, unless I'm getting paid, I don't want to be down there. Mm -hmm. So they have a policy where you can come on the field before the game starts, get it out, be seen, whatever you want to do talk to the coaches, whatever, but you got to go back up top. And I'm okay with that because, again, three hours standing up, nah. I mean, it, it was cool when I was younger, but being older, I just want to sit down. Yeah. And, you know, I don't I don't know too many old guys. I mean, none of them dudes from the 83 team because they ain't, they ain't putting no lawn chairs down there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, so, We're rocking chairs. <laughs> we, we better off where we are 
up up top, you know. Um, but they do have some rules in place. Uh, like I said, some All American Ring of Honor. Um, if you're playing now, uh, let's see, College Football Hall of Fame. Uh, I found out. I found out the hard way that the Hall of Fame being inducted into the University of Miami Hall of Fame doesn't get you down there. That doesn't get you down there. Wow. I, I was walking. I was walking with Michael Irvin and Ray Lewis, and we were walking down. And of course, I stopped to talk to somebody, which I usually do. And those guys went ahead. So by the time I got down there, I was like starting to walk on. The guy said, "Hey, where are you going?" I said, "Well, I'm, I'm going on the field." They were like, well, we can't go on the field. I said, well, why not? And he pointed up. I go, what, what's up? And he said, the ring of honor. I said, no, nah, I ain't in that, but I'm a Hall of Famer. They were like, nah, that don't, that don't, wow. that don't go that far. I was like, damn, I, I don't think I wore that ring since. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I wore that thing since. But they basically said that's a different entity and it's different from the university. So, you know, being inducted into the Hall of Fame, has nothing to do with the university. I found that out. Oh, wow. Well, all right. Well, they're going to have to fix some of this. I don't know oh, if Mario good. wants that, though. It's all, I mean, but do you really want to stand down there for three hours, three and a half hours, though, man? It's hot. We got a great spot upstairs. Um, Rick Rimmer and Jessica upstairs. Uh, basically, you could see the field straight. Yeah, you're in a suite. I mean, it's a great box. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, if you want to go down there, then I don't know. I, I'd say pick your battles. If you want to do anything, give us some food in there or something, you know. But I, I don't want to be down on the field. That's, I'm too old for that now. And plus, yeah, yeah, those guys old. are bigger, stronger, faster, and I don't know if I can get out the way. <laughs> you know, as a coach, I always listen to the play and said, okay, they're coming this way. Let me move. But I don't know where the plays are going. And them guys are big. So I ain't, I'm not trying to get hurt for nobody. <laughs> Hey, LT, have you had a chance to watch any of this Jeremiah Smith kid, the recruit at um, yes. Hollywood Shamanad? Yes. Um, Travis here wants to know if Andre Johnson, and I'll throw you in there as well, is anybody helping Miami recruit? I, they're not allowed to have you guys involved no. technically no. In, that in that recruitment. Um, right. But this kid, is a, to me, is a generational talent. I'm, I'm looking at this kid. I'm seeing Michael Irvin, Andre oh, yeah. Johnson, Lamar only, Thomas. Only probably faster, Gary. Yeah, he's, uh, well, I, I, tell you, I tell you this. I watched the I watched a couple games he's played, and I was very impressed with him. I mean, he's a he's a he's a hell of a ball player. I tell you what, long as Miami keeps winning and they 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 do a good job of winning, I don't know the kid. I don't know what's going on, but I tell you this: they have a better chance if they continue oh, doing what they're doing, and that's offense that he is seeing out there. And the way these guys are running around making plays, you can't help but want to play in something like this in front of your home people. Yeah, you can go up to Ohio State. That's cool. But if we're winning and we're doing what we're supposed to do, he's not. Just my opinion. I don't know it. I'm not, I don't know the kid. But I'm just saying if we're winning and we're doing what we're supposed to do, I think he's going to stay. And I, Kevin I agree. Beard, he and, should and be Kevin here. Beard is your receiver coach, you can't ask for nothing better. And I'll tell you right now, come December, Lamar, it's full court press. They're, they're, oh, yeah. they're, they're, that kid is, will will have the greatest opportunity for a kid coming out of high school to the University of Miami in the history of this program. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, I mean, I mean, that the, I I feel pretty confident that the collective is going to you know, will would step up big time for Jeremiah Smith. Uh, you know, by whatever guidelines they have to follow in December, they're you know it's a moving target what the rules are. But I, I feel pretty certain that somehow Jeremiah Smith's going to know that if he comes to Miami, between the corporate community down here and the collective, uh, that it is going to be a, a, a very nice opportunity for him that will trump anything outside the area in, from Ohio State and anywhere else. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Does, does the collective do retro? <laughs> yeah, you would have loved having the collective back, back, back in the day. Well, hey, um, Tolbert talked about when Howard made Alonzo, told Alonzo, you're going to be a fullback. Mm -hmm. And 
Howard was, you know, kind of a little revolutionary in how he got the fullback involved in the game and what an important position that was. But uh, somebody else had to play fullback too uh, um, at at a certain time, and uh, his name was uh, Jason Marucci, and he is in the lobby at this time and. Uh, there he is, man. He, he Lamar. He looks a lot younger than you. Didn't, <laughs> did Jason play before you? I, I just said didn't let the gray grow in like Lamar did. I, that mine looks. I, you like got, you got the gray in. hair dye going or something. Yeah, not yet. It's coming. <laughs> hey, this this is my buddy Jason Marusi, who actually ended up being my neighbor. <laughs> yeah, man. We we've been together for a while, bud. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it a little later about how we. How we came together as one. Yeah. Jason, from Ohio. Ohio. O H I O. He knows how Why? To <laughs> Why? Why? Why Miami? Why yeah. Miami? Oh, come on. That you've been to Ohio? <laughs> yeah, the recruit. <laughs> yeah. If you've been to Ohio, you know why it was Miami. Come on. Um, you know, geez, Jimmy was was around and it was January came down to visit, probably a foot of snow on the ground, left Cleveland, Ohio, uh, flew out, came down to Miami. They had us on the beach within half an hour, landing at the airport. I was, that was it. I was done. I wasn't going back. <laughs> so the beach is what sold you, man? Yeah. You know, listen, I'm from uh, Bourbon High School. That's where Bernie Kozar went to school. Yeah, that's right? where Bernie's from. And mm-hmm. when I was a little kid, my dad used to take me to the uh, Boardman games and, and Bernie was the guy. And, he came to Miami, won a national championship. You know, that was – if you were from Boardman and you played football, Bernie was your idol. So it, it was an easy deal. As soon as Miami had an offer, I was jumping on it. And, and who, who, who else who, offered who, you, Jason? Pardon me? Who else offered you? Where else could you have gone? So uh, I Kansas State, one of the – one of the Stoops brothers, you know, they're all Youngstown guys. So they, they mm-hmm. wanted they, – he was at Kent State for a second, then went to Kansas State. Uh, Bobby did, and that was one of the schools I looked at. Uh, but be, it was really between Miami and Pitt. Pitt was the one that kind of I had gravitated towards as like an hour from where I was, and I, I really liked it there. Kentucky was another one that, you know, I had an opportunity to go to, but then they were much more basketball school than at least now. Uh, Mark's got them close where they're at least, you know, they're in the SEC and they're competitive and they're doing, he's doing a great job over there. Mm-hmm. So, when, so when you were making this big decision about University of Miami, did you get a, a lot of flack there being from Ohio? I mean, did, what, what was you know, in Ohio? You know, that that time it was probably more you know, where I was. It, a lot of people were Michigan as well, right? Michigan, mm. Bo was doing good. Ohio State was kind of down during those years. Now, I think two years under me, Robert Smith, he came out and had a hell of a career at Ohio State, but he was on that that you know team where they really started to get good again, right? And then it wasn't really until uh, Tressel came back that they really took it to the next level. No, Tressel, I, you know, I, I I actually <laughs> yeah. you know you talk about Stoops and and um, being on his staff, I ran into a couple guys you played against, and they say you were a terror up there. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that listen, remember, Jimmy had that fullback position. That's what brought me to Miami. And, uh, you know, I, I remember sitting at home and, and they made that coaching change. He went to uh, Dallas, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Dennis came in from the West Coast and, and brought that single back in. And I was like, wow, what, what's going to happen here? So, you know, they, they that fullback position was a, a sparse. We had the goal line situations. Right. Uh, you know, but short yardage situations, but man, that was a, a whole big transition for us. Now, did the fact that we brought Dennis Erickson in, did that kind of make you say, I don't know if I'm making the right decision or, you know, I, I didn't know until I got there at the time, you know, I didn't really, to be honest, there was, uh, we weren't as much social media, right? So, right. In, in Ohio, that offense, uh, Washington State wasn't getting a lot of publicity, not a lot of TV time. So I really didn't even know what I was getting into till I had gotten down to Miami and figured out, hey, wait, we had remember Martin Patton and I, he was the yep. tailback, I was the fullback. And all of a sudden, there's only one spot on there. And it's, uh, yeah, I, but I didn't know till I got there. <laughs> but once I hit those beaches, I wasn't going back. <laughs> and Stephen McGuire was there. 
Yeah, absolutely. No, they didn't. didn't uh, <laughs> they didn't give you the ball a ton, Jason, but you averaged like five yards a carry. Yeah. Uh, hey, when listen, they I had to make you. the most of it. When you don't get the ball that often, yeah. you got to take it and go. <laughs> now you got. I remember you getting it a lot in the Nebraska game, the national championship. Yeah, yeah, we that, had uh, that was a lot of guys down that game. Yep, and you got it a lot yeah. that game. Uh, one thing that, I remember was that about the shutout that, game that was the shutout game, right? Yeah, twenty-two yeah. nothing. Yeah, the one Jeez. the one thing I remember about you is in practice you ran hard, and you know we practice hard, but I know you you made a lot of guys go okay this dude is pretty pretty good because you ran the ball extremely hard. During practice, and, yeah, absolutely you know, appreciate that. But but we had to compete. It was yeah. all about competition. If you didn't run the ball hard, probably we're going to be gone. Yeah, well, remember, you, I heard Mario talk about it. I think last week the scout team is what makes and breaks a team, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I remember I lining up and looking across the line, and I see Russell Maryland, Cortez Kennedy. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, it was Shane Curry. It was it was not for the faint of heart. Tiger Clark was on, you know, it was just, it was crazy. And the, and you got, like you said, Ogeron, scout team guy saying, hey, get out, get your butt over there and block those guys. And I'm like, come on, really? Well, it, it paid off. Yeah. Hey, look, you guys had some damn good football team. Those scout team years, man, they made they made you. Yeah. You know, they, they, they truly made you because you knew your job was to prepare the best defense in the country. For the, for the for the next upcoming week, but also you had to make it to quarter quarter pounders. You had to make it to Thursday to get the quarter pounders. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and that that's when you hit at practice. You know, it's a whole different ball game now. Yeah. Tuesday, oh, yeah. Wednesday, you know, that was not for the faint of heart. You you had to bring it on those two days. Yeah, you, you, you had, had to bring it. Parents. Yeah. Because I told you a couple of years ago, my wife and I bought stuff from them at the Los Olas Art Festival. Remember yes. I told you. They, uh, uh, how are they doing? Are they okay? Yeah, they're doing well. Yeah, yeah. Are they still Actually, my, dad, my dad's over here today. My my little one, the eighth grader, had a uh, middle school football game, so he came over. They're they're they haven't been to doing too many shows, but yeah, they they really enjoyed that. Yeah, your son's playing football. What does he play? Running yeah, back? he's uh he he doesn't come off the field. They got him at a tight end and a defensive end. Good. And you're in Jacksonville now, Jason. I am. Yeah, South Georgia, really. Oh, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and let's let's talk about San, Santino. Where is he now? He's at Wake Forest. Wake Forest. Yeah. Yeah. So, if Miami ever was to play Wake Forest, <sighs> it'll happen it, soon. It, it tugs at your heart a little bit. Yeah, I think I think maybe next year on the next year or the year after. I thought on the schedule, right? Yeah, yeah. got to be coming soon. We haven't played gotta them in a while. Yeah. Listen, they can't duck them forever. I already gave uh, Klaus a little bit of a hard time when I dropped them off about that. <laughs> I had my Miami license plates on, and uh, they, they everyone was kind of taking a look, like, what's up with this guy? <laughs> They're just jealous. Yeah. Well, listen, you know you got to you gotta stick with your team. That's It is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. So, you know, him going to Wake Forest, I know your, your heart is, you know, you're watching the Wake Forest games, and you're probably watching – the Miami game. What have you thought so far from the from the uh, from what you've seen from Miami? You know, uh, this is th- this year. Um, liking it a lot more than I had did last year, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think uh, I think losing uh, Lashley as an offensive coordinator was was tough for Van Dyke and that transition. And, and last year they completely overhauled it. And you know he had some injuries. Actually, my son played with Restrepo seven on seven in Florida Fire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we knew that kid from the get go. I mean, he was, he was the guy and he was a late offer. If you remember, they, they mm-hmm. weren't real sure about let, giving him, they didn't know if he was the guy, uh, but he's a dog and he'll go get it. Right. And when he went down last year, I think that was a psychological thing. And, and uh, Van Dyke didn't have his guy. Uh, and this year, you know, it seems like up to now, at least the offensive coordinators got a plan that's working for him. Everybody's healthy. They're, they're doing what they need to do. Yeah. Yeah, last year was a disaster all across the board. I mean, he had he had lost his two receivers that went to the NFL. Yeah. And then he loses Restrepo. So when he gets the ball in the first game and he he drops back, he goes, Where the hell is everybody? Because they were yep. ignoring these kids. And then the line was abysmal. So, you know, he's lucky he's still here. He, he, he got hit smacked around pretty good last year. 
yeah, but he's got the mindset and the mental toughness to come back from that, and he's proving everybody wrong. Yeah, well, showing up this year, I mean, that's a testament to his mental toughness, right? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of guys would have folded and, and just packed it in. Yeah, and we heard that. Well, we knew this before, but Nick Saban wanted him, and yeah. he said no. He, he would have been hey, starting there. Hey, Jason, you know, I, I, I look up there, you got a nice full head of hair, <laughs> nice looking hair. Good I job. remember when it was it was chopped off. Yeah, listen, I, I got that picture somewhere. I don't know if it's in here, but my kids joke around about it. Yeah. Hey. Hey, you can't get away with that anymore, right? No, you can't, you can't, you can't do all that. But I mean, that was just a rite of passage, man. Yeah. We, we you know, we we knew it was coming. They, you had to deal with it, you know, you had to there's nothing to do. I mean, every freshman had I we and all those freshman pitchers. It's a bunch of ball heads going on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, nope. and, and, and you know that some of the white guys wore the hair a lot longer, so that was not a fair deal. It was four months later, and I, we're still struggling. It's like two weeks later, and, and everybody else is like, hey, back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the, bro- the brother just made a style of it. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> hey, oh, man. You know, hey, so tell me, when you think back – Building 36. What are some of the memories, man? I mean, the, the, <laughs> the don't don't go R, but put, the, ba- put yeah. the babies to sleep, everybody. <laughs> well, yeah, I was gonna say, what's our audience here? We gotta <laughs> you know listen for, I for remember. the viewers that don't know building 36 was our football dorm, and it was not the the best looking place. I mean, it I, obviously when I came down on my visit. I said, this is the worst football dorm I've ever seen. <laughs> it probably but was. It was something about it. Yeah. And and you probably see see the digs that they live in now, right? The, the things oh, that yeah. the students have now. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Well, remember, we, we had it was, and I think if I if I if I'm right, they broke that up, right? You can't, they don't they put the kids yeah. in like general population now, right? It's not yeah. like you're all together. Yeah, something similar to that. They they made it where you can't give football players uh, their own dorm. So they kind of – some schools get away with it. They they go, okay, we'll fill this – we'll we'll build this beautiful football dorm and we'll let regular students stay on the first floor or something like that. Yeah. You know, so they blend it in and they say, okay, we got regular students here, so it's not really a football dorm. Yeah. But, hey, you but remember – football dorm, you remember that one pay phone outside? <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a fight to get that. We How many races out front there? <laughs> oh, right. That was the thing. It was like line up and let's see who the fastest guy out here is. Well, and then the, sometimes I, that turned into a boxing match, right? Well, I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that. A couple drinks here and there. Yeah. yeah turned into some. Mark Caesar wants in. Good times. <laughs> hey, hey Jason, like, I can't talk to you, man. When you think back to, to the University of Miami days, like you know, played alongside some some really good players and. You know what? What's your take on like all those, 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 those guys? I mean, what was your take on? It? I I would say my take on it was, man, they're brothers for life. I mean, I spent a lot of time with those guys, and you know, we, I feel like we're, we're we're brothers. Absolutely, and you like you know, we started that Canes for Life to make sure that nobody got left behind, and we we tried to take care, of keep guys coming out of school to uh, at least a minimal standard and, and don't want to let anybody fall through the cracks, keep track of everybody. I mean, that's what the brotherhood is. And, and, you know, I look back and you don't know what anybody else is doing. Cause what you're doing is just normal to you. Right. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we went through and, and coming into that program and just the expectation of what was demanded of you, Right. You just you went to practice. You did your thing. You, the standard was the standard. You had no other no idea. Like I remember years later going back and, and saying to people, wait a second, you didn't do this. And they're like, no, you got of your mind. Like they looked at some of the stuff that we did from a physical perspective, mm-hmm. things in the weight room, things on the field, dealing with that heat. And we let, to be fair, back then we didn't have luxury accommodations. You know, that weight room. It, it, it was uh, it was an iron pit, right? And roll was in there, and we had the doors open, and it was a hundred degrees. And, and I mean, that's what built character. That's what built us. Mm-hmm. And I think, like for me, knowing that that's the way that those guys that I came up with are, it, it's changed everything since then for me in life. Mm-hmm. So, like everything that I take my mindset into everything else is easy after that. 
Mm-hmm. It's just your that's your new normal, and that's your expectation. And I think that's what Mario is trying to get back to right now at the U. And I think that's why you know you got to filter through some guys, and not everybody's built like that. And you're not going to find everybody embracing that kind of lifestyle. And, and you got to find those guys. And, and when he does, it's going to be another run like we had back in the day. If he can make that happen. Now, what I don't know is, are there people still out there like that? That's the question. Right. You know, with social media and with all the the pampering that the kids get and not hitting on certain days and only so many hours and the, the, uh, the, the parents that kind of take care of the kids and, and they stick up for them, you know, it's, it, we'll see what happens, but if he finds the guys, they're going to build an army and it'll be just like the guys that we have that for life you're there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent point, Jason, because for the last 15, 20 years, that has not been the standard. And it has not been the recruiting results that we need to have to get better. And now we're starting to see that. And yeah. we're starting to see this hard work. And you knew that Mario last year was going to gut this team and probably even the coaching staff, which is what he did. He had to do it because he was embarrassed. Doesn't tell anybody publicly, but he knew when he got here, he said, oh, no, these guys don't know how to work. And that's what, exactly what you guys did was work. Yeah. And I, and I you hear didn't have that many five stars, but you had guys that busted their ass to win. Yeah. As a unit, togetherness, you had it. Yep. You got to find the guys and then you got to develop them. You know, they yep. just, the, the, you, you got teams that'll come in and, and bring, like Dion did, how many kids off the, the portal and put together a squad that's going to get some wins. But what we don't know, because we're not inside that locker room, not on the sideline, not playing with those guys, is are they a family? Are they cohesive? Do they put it together? Will they, you know, will they, would they die for each other? Yeah. Just how far, how far are you going to go deep into your heart to, to find it? Right. That's excellent. And how and how much are they going to listen to Dion and before yeah. it gets too old or stale? I don't well, know. When I heard Mario and people were, you know, the, the grumblings on the social media, this and that about uh, he's being too hard on these kids. You know, I just I was like laughing. I'm like, oh, my God, here we go. Right. <laughs> you know, go with too hard on somebody. I go, you, you want to see hard. Come go back 30 years and see what it was. Yep. With those with those plastic tubs or rubber tubs for the ice. Yeah. That was not like they have now. Not even close. Yeah, no doubt. You no, know, you. What What's it like to to be in a a running back room that's that's filled? You know, you had some. There was some guys in that running back room when you were there. Yeah, I mean, because right now we're seeing uh, a packed running back room, and all those guys are contributing in some way. What was What's that like? I mean, competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think. Listen, that just it it makes everybody in the room better, right? Iron sharpens iron. You, if mm-hmm. you don't have those guys to go at you and you don't know that someone's, you know, next man up mentality, right? You, you're fighting every day for your job. So, I mean, that just is going to, that's and it should be like that with every position, right? Mm-hmm. But that's just going to make us better. It's going to just make us, uh, every position, it's just raise the bar. But it, especially in the running back room, because, you know, look, th- this, the, the game is changing. And in that running back position, like my the fullback position was almost gone for a while. I remember my kids saying, Hey dad, there's like this new position, and they got this H back guy, and he's like, I'm like, Yeah, that's a fullback. You just don't know what that is because you haven't seen it for a few years. Right. And that you know, the running backs are it's a it's a it's a tough spot to be in NFL. They're not paying the guys like they should. You saw what happened to Chubb the other day. Everybody wants to pass the ball. It's uh it's a, it's a, it be like right now. I don't know if I would, if I had a, a, a kid that was wanting to be a running back, it'd be tough to push him into that position. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You, you really? tell him, Hey, listen, go play outside linebacker, defensive mm-hmm. back, play safety. But, but that room, they should be good. I mean, you think about the running backs that have come through there, right? Especially the guy Solinger put through. Mm-hmm. It should be running back you. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. We're really every position you. <laughs> That's true, too. Hey, yeah. hey Jason, um, you know we were we were connected <laughs> through uh, an unfortunate uh, circumstances there at the University of Miami. <laughs> we both were indicted in the Pell Grant, oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't know. Did you get to go? I always wanted to ask you that. Did you ever go to? Did you get to go to Bureau? Because I didn't. I did. Yep. See, they I was they they made me stay home. And uh, obviously, I was able to file an injunction uh, the day before the 
Iowa. Iowa, game. Iowa yeah. I filed an injunction, so I flew up that night with Maggard uh, the night before the game. And, of course, I lied to Coach Harrison. He said, you you ready? Are you freaking ready? I'm like, yeah, Coach. He said, you've been working out? Hell yeah, Coach. I yeah. ain't been doing nothing. I'm going <laughs> to die out there that night. But um, <laughs> that was, you know, the, the fact that we were connected and that we're the only two guys that get indicted. And then years later, I, I, we move into the same neighborhood. We yeah, were I walk outside and I'm like, wait a second. Who is that in the backyard over? That's Lamar. <laughs> yeah. We were neighbors. That's crazy. We were, we were neighbors in Highland Ranch Estates down here in Davie. We were neighbors. And I was like, is that Marucci? And so with that being said, you you got into, uh, you, you have a chiropractic uh, uh, practice. Yep. And obviously it was big enough that you had a big old house. It was a huge house, matter of fact. Uh, I don't I don't know about that. I, <laughs> I, I, remember, have you looked up the prices of that house that you yeah, sold? Yeah, to see 20 yeah. years ago, 20 yeah. years ago, you know, now, wow. Yeah, it makes me sick every time I pass that neighborhood. But anyway, <laughs> um, how is it how is it doing? How is it going? I mean, I know you moved to Jacksonville. How's your chiropractic practice? Yeah, it's good. Going? So so I haven't been practicing for a while. I've okay. got um I think we're up to 13 locations. So we have uh, interventional pain, orthopedic, surgical, uh, extremity, and spine work. And so we and, and now we just added neurology. So it's a multi-specialty group practice. Wow. And in some of the offices, we still have the chiros. But now I, I joke around. I tell everybody, I'm just the complaints department. I just handle, put out <laughs> fires all day long. <laughs> well, how did, how did you get into that? Like, how did how did that come about? Well, you know, as, as a when I was just practicing chiropractic, I'd be making referrals out and, and I'd, a patient would go, I'd send somebody to a medical doctor and they maybe not come back. And I call what? them, Hey, what happened to you? And they said, well, the medical doctor said, Hey, I don't have to come back. And after a while of getting tired of doing that, I just finally said, you know, what? I'm going to hire somebody. So then I just brought a medical doc in the office and did well, that grew. And we just one after the other, just kept adding, you know, these service lines and, and it's, you know, it's knock on wood. It's going pretty well so far. Good. And that's up in the Jacksonville, the Duval County area? Yeah, we have one spot in Jacksonville, but we're in Florida, uh, Georgia, and South Carolina. Okay. Wow. That's awesome, man. Yeah. It is awesome. like a virus. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a perfect thing for me because I'm yeah. an attorney. I could refer someone to you and it would keep it in-house rather than, well, you know, don't go to the chiropractor. Just go to an orthopedic. But, you know, there's there's clearly advantages to going to the chiropractor. Listen, I go once a week. Absolutely. So it's a good idea what you did. Very creative. Yeah. Congratulations. Yep. And I know when, you know, UM, they uh, they had Elliot Gresky there for a long time. And I know he was helping the kids and in the their training staff and keep keeping kids in the game, like staying healthy. That's, you know, mm -hmm. that's key. We had one with the Dolphins also. Um, you know, I was, I, I'm not really a chiropractic guy. I don't like to be cracked and, you know, I, my bones are already. Unless, unless it's a linebacker safety, right? Yeah, I mean, save my cracks for the, for the game time. But you know, that's 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 awesome, man. That you uh, that you have that practice, and you know, I've, I've been following your son for a long time. I'm happy for him. Uh, you know, I'm gonna cheer for him, man. Except for yeah. you know when. We appreciate uh, that. Yep. And and listen, but, maybe maybe we don't end up. It's years before they play, but we'll see. You know. Who knows? Who knows? Well, the whole we, thing's going to be up in the air now because you got Stanford and Cal coming into the ACC. Yeah, yeah. So it's crazy. The, the realignment, the realignment's going to be nuts. I think eventually it's going to be two two divisions, right? It'll be like the AFC NFC, just college version. Yeah. yeah. I just don't see how the. I mean, the, the money's pushing this thing, and, and it seems like everybody's trying to align and get where they need to be. Uh, Miami, I wish we were still independent, like the uh, the good old days. Oh yeah, the good old day where we could pick our schedule. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, Jason, absolutely. We definitely like to thank you for coming on the show, man. We appreciate it and hope your practice continues to do well. And we'll be cheering for your son. And uh, it's always great to see you, my brother. All right, I'm buddy. Sure Anything you guys, guys on, need on ever, let me know. All I'm right, sure Jason. All the guys on the WhatsApp man. group are saying, Jason. Damn, well. that's Marucci. We ain't seen him in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys, take it easy. All right. Have a great night. Well. All right. Bye -bye. Yeah. Um, LT, you know, I forgot about that indictment thing when uh, oh, yeah. until you brought, until you brought it up, and now I'm remembering you two were the only two players from that whole Pell Grant thing. Yep. That the, that the government came after, right? 
Yep, the only did you, two because did, we did. You go to the federal courthouse. Yes. What happened right. was because I was there so, too. I was there with Mark. Right. So he and I were the only two. So all the other players signed a pretrial diversion. Right. They got into the pretrial diversion program. Well, in my case, my parents gave the information, the indictment papers to a lawyer in Gainesville. Well, he didn't. He didn't fill it out in time. He didn't wow. return it. So that's why I got indicted. I can't tell you what happened to Marucci, but the whole thing was why we were allowed to rejoin the team was because in my case, uh, I sued the university. I filed an injunction against them saying, you got all those other guys that are guilty that already admitted their guilt and they're still on the team when I haven't admitted anything. So they had no choice but to let me back on the team once I filed that injunction. So it saved my senior year. Wow. But yeah, him, Marucci and I were, we were the the guys that the federal government uh, went after and they 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 plastered it all over everywhere to oh, yeah. Miami football players indicted federal grand jury, da, 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 da. Uh, it was, uh, it was interesting. To, to, and how did it end? What was the, what was the final judgment on that? Well, we, we all had, we, Myself and Marucci, we had to get in the we had to get in the pretrial diversion program, and there was restitution. Obviously, we had to pay the money back. Um, but you know, once we paid the money back, they kind of dropped it. That's all they really cared about was getting good getting for them. The yeah. yeah. So <laughs> and obviously, we all know what happened to Tony. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, good, good. But good he for and I always be connected for that. <laughs> wow. All right, Bruce. Uh, before we let you go, any uh, closing thoughts for the for the off week? I'm continuing my my uh, same pattern. Five and zero. Oh, I want to tighten up some things. I agree with Gary a million percent. There's certain things that you just can't do against really good teams, and we haven't really met anybody good but A and M. And I loved how we played against them. We were physical the entire game. Yes, and um, now I'm hungry. Thanks. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this game, but I, I, it's really hard not to look forward to, to UNC. It's just, it is hard. It's hard. Man. Yeah, but, it, it, it's going to be hard for the ACC players. It's an game, and it counts and means something, so I'm sure Mario's got their attention. Yeah. Okay, very right, nice. Bruce, we'll see. I, we'll I'll see stop you. off there tomorrow, because when I was there two weeks ago, I said, get on Lamar's show. I did tell <laughs> the guy. Well, I appreciate you for this sub, because it's pretty good. It's damn good. <laughs> it's real good. Are they really our sponsor now? Well, I don't the know if we got them tonight. Well, <laughs> They're sponsored tonight. Okay. They're sponsoring Lamar's dinner tonight. <laughs> That's right. I'm, That's I'm right. going to Kingsware tomorrow, so I'll stop by there, too. I Thank you, Bruce. Hey, you Bruce. Know, listen, all you can do is just keep playing, keep it going. This is great. This is great. We don't have too many negative things to say, which is a Canes fan. Let's go, baby. Let's do it. All right, all right. you guys. All right, man. So what kind of sub did they give you? I got the ham and cheese. I got the ham and cheese with mayonnaise and mustard and pickles and a little bit of pepper. Um, yeah, I am. Enjoy- and I got some chips. Thank you, Little Spotters. That's a that that sub shop is amazing. Is amazing. And, and, and you know, I, I'll 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 talk about them now. Now that they're taking care of you for dinner, <laughs> <laughs> but everyone's been yelling. People have been saying for well, you, you know. They're, they're saying, "Oh, you're talking about La Spada all the time because it's right next door to Canesware, you know." So um, it's like a landmark, La Spada. Look at this cup um, right here. This is nice. I like that. I like that. Um, all right, LT. I I thought instead of a word association tonight, mm-hmm. that I would ask you a simple question because I, you know, okay. to me, I think this is what this whole thing is all about right now. How can this Miami Hurricane football team get better? They can get better by going in every day of practice and competing. Um, I think that's where that's where I think they've failed over the last couple of years. No real competition. Um, I love seeing that running back room field. I love seeing four, five, six deep at receiver. I love seeing that because I know those guys are competing. And I know that guy that's pulling the strings – wants to see competition and you win games through competition. And I, 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 I've said this long time ago, I told Mario, he wasn't going to be in contention to win 
games until they get depth and they compete. And that's why we won championships because of depth and competition. And you 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 use this off week. Yeah, they have to go recruit, but they're they're trying to get better. And those running backs are trying to compete. Those receivers are trying to compete. The offensive linemen are trying to compete. It's just a different. It's a when I think of this University of Miami team, it's not like the, the teams I've thought of over the past years. I see them wanting to work and be better. I see them wanting to be coached hard because that's what they're getting. You know, I, I think over the last couple of years, they didn't want to be coached hard and they, they just quit. When the, you know, when the going got rough and the going got tough, they just quit. I mean, prime example was Texas A&M in the beginning. He got down. There were some mistakes made in the beginning. And I saw the look in all those fans' faces. Like, oh, here we go. Here we go again. <laughs> Not that sideline. It was a different look on that sideline. I you agree. Know? So that's the thing that I think this team can continue to get better at. I mean, there's going to be some tough games coming up. But the practices will prepare you for that. Because if you make those practices tough, They'll be tougher mentally and physically. Yeah. Well, the head coach really does control the pulse quite a bit. You know, it's, it's like we've been talking about the running back room a lot and people were asking about it. But, uh, you know, if, if you people say rank, rank, the rank the guys. OK, if you were, were going to rank them. I mean, Don Chaney probably would not be number one or number two. Uh, right. He'd be number three or four, you know, somewhere there. Uh, but you go up to Philadelphia last Saturday. Mm hmm. And look who started the football game, Don Chaney. And that was a reward for how hard he ran in a game that meant absolutely nothing when he was on the field for the most mm -hmm. part. And that was that Bethune-Cookman game. And mm -hmm. he came out and he played like it was the Super Bowl. And the coaches rewarded him for that. And they started him um, against Temple. And, and Henry Parrish, who's the number one, you know, been the starter, uh, he came in and ended up with the most yards and all mm -hmm. that. You know, great. But Don Chaney started that game. Lamar, what message was Mario Cristobal, Shannon Dawson, and Tim Harris sending by, by making that move? My opinion, they were they were saying, hey, guys, it's whoever produces during the week. You know, the best guy is going to play. The guy that's going to come in and, I mean, there might be there might have been a little carryover, carryover from the Bethune Cup game. But obviously they saw some things that they liked. And they, they went with it and said, okay, guys, he's going to start this week. I mean, that to me, man, I, I can recall sitting there in the receiver room and, you know, each week, who's going to be the starter? It's what you did in practice. You know, it was Kevin Williams going to start. Was Lamar Thomas going to start? Was Horace Copeland going to start? Was Daryl Spencer going to start? Or one of the Afros going to start? You know, it was competition. So, you know, it kept you on edge because you couldn't go out and not just not do anything in practice. And so you felt it every day. Oh, you hell felt yeah. it out there every day. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, I mean, my senior year, I had AC Tellison behind me. And, man, he must have been the biggest snitch I've ever met in my life. I mean, he was like, hey, look, look at LT. Look, look at that. Look, look at LT. Look. Oh, man. L, you know, LT didn't go to class last week. Not at all. You know, LT didn't lift weights. Not at all. But he wanted to get in there. He and every the time field. I did something, he would run his little ass in there, you know. But that was – I said, okay, I got I to keep him at bay now. I got to keep him at – so I had to go out and I had to – you know, there was no room for – nobody wanted to watch you go out there and lay an egg in practice because we all were working our asses off. It was no days for, for resting. So if I was to go out and lay an egg that day, Gino would have had some words with me. Somebody else would have had some words with me. You can't do it. You know, you were looked upon to do and, and to set the set the tone, you know, and that's what I tell Restrepo. You got to set the tone, man. You know, if you're going to stay out to practice, you're going to stay out to practice and you're going to do it every day and work on it. You know what? Those other guys, it's going to become contagious because they're going to see how sharp your game is. And knowing these guys now with Mario being the head coach and Kevin Beard being the receiver coach, they all want to be successful. They all want to show what they can do. So how do you do that? Put the time in. And I think that's what they're doing now.
Did Dennis push those kind of buttons? Like, you he know, didn't, he didn't have to. He didn't have it to. Was al- it was already in, it was already ingrained in us. It was already when I got there, I didn't there I, coach Alexander didn't tell me. I saw Dale Dawkins and Andre uh Andre Andre Brown, Randall Hill. I saw those guys staying out to practice working with with Steve Walsh. I mean, I, I saw it every day. And so when it was my turn, it was it was just understood that that's what you do. You you pick your quarterback, you go out, you throw after practice, because we always looked at it like this. In the fourth quarter, that's where we win games. So you might as well do it when you're tired, because right. you gotta be able to you have to be able to focus and concentrate. So it's it's better to run routes after practice and make some of those uh catches because if you can do it then when you know you're tired after a hard day of practice. You're going to be set for the game in the fourth quarter. You're set. Oh, yeah. We ran that route already. Let's go. We ran that last week. Let's go. After practice. So there was a lot that went into it. I mean, I just remember at all positions, guys just staying and working, and, and we all wanted to get better. We, we worked in the summer. You know, there was no going home for the summer. You go home for the summer, you're not starting. You're mm-hmm. not – hell, you might not even be on the team. You know, it was – it was unwritten, you know. It was it was like, hey, you knew w- what you had to do, you know. Hey, mom, yeah, I'm not probably coming home for the summer. Um, so I see you when yeah, I see you. Know, I've obviously watched this for a long time, and I laughed like, you know, there was somebody on our message boards at canesport.com today that was like getting on us and saying, you know, let these kids just be happy and enjoy what they've done so far. And so, and I'm thinking, you know, why are you guys breaking down the film and, and, and nitpicking and, and saying they can get better here and get better there? And we're thinking to ourselves, like, are you kidding me? They haven't, they haven't done anything yet this season. Uh, the season is just beginning here over the next few weeks. Yeah, for for the person to say that they they obviously are the are the parent that that uh will come meet with the head coach and say, "My, my you're working my kid too hard. You're working my kid too hard. Why are you working him? He cries every night. He just wants yeah. to play ball." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, nah, the season's just beginning now. And these yeah. guys, this off week is really important, and I'm yeah. sure Mario's grinding them away here. They were practicing yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week. Um, I'm sure he's working them very, very hard. And he's, um, probably, right, and he's going to recruit. He's going to recruit. He has to go recruit. Beginning of the week and end of the week, he's <laughs> he's, he's recruiting. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, he, he'll be out at a couple high school games Thursday night and Friday night, and uh, the coaches will all will be on the road on Friday. Yeah. So, yeah, no, yeah. They are, they're finding time to recruit. There's no doubt about it. Um, all right, let's um, let's thank everybody, Lamar. we got to obviously thank Caneswear uh, for being the presenting sponsor of the show. Um Caneswear is where it's at for all of your Canes merchandise needs with the, the new store at 2655 South University Drive in Davie. Um, the law firm of Ratson and Faxadomo. Um, let, let, let's um, I, I, I got to put her I got to I got to put her on the uh, back on the screen one, one more time, Lamar, because um, Kelvin Harris was making a comment in the comments that uh, he would if he could be represented by um, what did you say her name is again? Mickey Ratson. Mickey. If he could be represented by Mickey, he'd go get arrested. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, hopefully you guys don't ever need them. But if you do, uh, they're there for you, and they're very aggressive uh, defense lawyers. Um, so um, we'll give a shout out to them. Uh, obviously, the Florida Beach Bowl, uh, new game coming to Drive Pink Stadium uh, in December. Uh, we'll have more conversation about that as the season goes on when we can finally reveal the mystery former Miami Hurricane. That's the brains behind that game and mm-hmm. and, pull, and pulling it all together. Um, but uh, listen, you got a weekend without football. Go down. You could uh, go to Las Patas, which fed Lamar tonight, and, and get yourself a sub. And then pop on next door to Canes where – and uh, they're loaded with with good stuff for you guys. Uh, you know they're 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 fired up the way the season started, obviously, and they got new merchandise coming in constantly. And um, maybe make that part of your weekend this weekend. You see the address of the store, twenty six fifty five South University Drive in Davie. Uh, if you live out of town and you can't get to the store, you can go to Caneswear.com 
any minute of, of the day um, and shop the entire inventory that you see behind myself and Lamar tonight. We will be back next Wednesday night. And don't forget about Williamson Cadillac. And Williamson Cadillac. You're right. You uh, Lamar, that's where Lamar goes to get his cars. Uh, right. You can you can go to Williamson Cadillac and you know get yourself one. I'll tell you, man. Did you get another? Uh, I mean, I don't know which model you got. Those new Escalades. Man, I'm I'm, I'm saving up for that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, me too. Like those things are crazy, crazy, sweet. crazy. Sweet. They are sweet. Yeah, they are. They are. Woof, 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 woof. Um, all right, so we'll be back next Wednesday night. Uh, we'll have a couple more alumni guests. We'll talk about the Georgia Tech game coming up, the ACC season, break it down a little bit uh, more for you. Uh, we thank all of you for watching. Again, all of the sponsors for Bruce, um, uh, Tolbert, uh, Jason, and Lamar. I'm Gary. Thank you so much for being part of our show tonight, and we will see you next week, everybody. Go Canes. <laughs>